Hi everyone, my name is Audrey O'Connor and I'm going to bring you through a beginners to intermediate level Pilates class for Iconic Offices. For today's class, you're going to need a chair, you're going to need a mat and a cushion. Today's class is going to be a really, really core focused class where you're going to lengthen and strengthen, but you're also really going to connect with those tiny, small muscles that maybe you forgot you had. So all you need to do is grab a chair and I'll see you on the mat. everyone and welcome to today's class. So as I said earlier, we're going to need a chair for today's class just to kind of increase the resistance of the class, work a little bit harder and just find new ways to strengthen and lengthen the core. So from here, before we start today, I'm going to bring you into a nice seat. If sitting like this doesn't suit you, you can always sit in mermaid, you can sit on your knees, you can sit on a cushion, whatever suits you best. And whether you've just left your office, maybe you're just starting the day, and maybe you just had your morning coffee, or you've just closed your laptop. Whatever space you've come out of, bring yourself away from that space and into this space right now. And commit to just really focusing on your breath for the next few minutes. From here, find your tailbone, drop your tailbone down into the ground. Find length and space through the core, lengthen the mid spine. And lengthen the neck. Notice where your gaze is landing, maybe it's around the tip of the nose. Lengthen the back of the crown of the head, and then immediately you find a bit of space. Take the thumb to the knuckle of the index finger, press that thumb down into the knuckle, press the arms down into the knee, and find a bit of space and opening. I want you to begin to breathe, and I want you to begin to notice your breath. As you breathe in through your nose, can you gently pause? And exhale out of your mouth. Breathe in deeply, inhale. And exhale. Could you breathe in for three seconds? Could you hold the breath and then could you release the breath? Could you breathe in deeply, inhale. Find length and space. Pause and exhale. And repeat this four more times. Observing and connecting with your breath today. Can you increase the depth of your breath? Can you allow the breath to come into the ribcage, but not only expand the ribcage, but also come into the core, into the stomach and expand that space. Pause and then exhale. So you breathe in through your nose without a breath to travel into the body. Find length, pause and exhale. Breathing in, pausing, exhaling. When I inhale, I'm really trying to find length. I'm trying to breathe in space that are a bit stuck. In places can be stuck through to tension in the body, in the mind. You know, you could be a bit tight in your body. Or you might just have a conversation with someone or you might be a little bit, you know, under pressure at the moment and that could create stuckness and blockages in the body. So really use this time as an opportunity to find those spaces and really breathe into them. Let's go for four more breaths, expanding, finding length and space through the body, the whole body. Pressing the tailbone into the mat, pausing, exhaling. Breathing in, inhaling. Pausing, exhale deeply. Inhaling. Pausing, exhaling. One more time, inhale. And exhale, bring your right hand down onto the floor beside you. Lift your left arm up. Notice lift your left arm up. Lift your left arm up like you're grabbing something, yeah. And then could you find length in your spine? Relax the right shoulder blade. Bend your right elbow towards the floor and then laterally stretch the body. Feel the tip belly button is pointing forward and you're stretching and drawing the right elbow to the floor. Come back to center, inhale. Lengthen that right arm up and feel yourself breathing into that right rib. Inhaling, pressing, pausing. Exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. Maybe you could add two more pulses. Reaching down, pulse, pulse. 
and pulse pulse for two and one good and come back to center bring the fingertips behind you draw your tailbone to the floor feel that there's a lift through your stomach through your core and then allow your heart to open not just open forward but all forward up and away from you maybe your throat will open and give your body the chance to expand whether it's first thing in the morning or after being at your desk all day really allow the heart to press up could you open your throat could your gaze lengthen and gaze up towards the ceiling soften the breath as it travels into your heart and release it for three and two and on one bring your hands behind your head interlock your fingertips press your head into your hands and when you do that it really opens up the throat it really opens up those elbows and it really creates space across the chest think about the muscles below your shoulders yeah around the mid spine could you press them forward good create more space and then exhale round good belly button pointing forward inhale to lengthen segmentally moving through the spine the throat the heart and exhale round inhale to open and exhale to round for three for two and on one and come back to center bring your hands across your shoulders there's very rarely a morning that I don't do this movement. I want you to breathe in deeply. I want you to inhale. And I want you to bring your elbows over to the left-hand side. I want you to bring your elbows up. Circumduct and bring them down. Good. Elbows come to the left. They come forward. They come back and around for three. For two. And on one reverse. Four three two and on one grab each opposite elbow bring both elbows to the left hand side round your back come forward open the left elbow reach it high by your ear and come down through and across really find that circumduction i find it so much harder to extend and open the heart um, then I find it to flex forward because my body's so used to flexion, you know, like if I'm looking at my phone or I'm cooking or I am at my computer. Generally, I'm in flexion. It's not always the right type of flexion, but I'm still in flexion. Whereas extension and space is harder to find, but we really need it. Come back to center, lengthen, reach round, press the back ribs away from you, yeah, and then open. Try and be mindful about your movement. Keep your ears by your biceps, biceps by your ear, so that you're not overstraining the body. Let's go for four. Good. Three. Open. Two. And one if you can every day. Start your morning doing something like that. You know, you don't have to spend like 15 minutes in the morning having a routine, but doing something simple like that can start you on a win for the day. So lie down in your mat. Let your head, neck and shoulders release down. I'm using the chair today. I love using the chair. Really helps you do a bit of mobility while doing core work. So grab your chair, bring your heels onto the chair. At any point it gets too much for you, either bring one of your feet back onto the chair or bring your feet onto the ground. From here, let's start with our alignment. Let your front ribs slide into your back ribs. Let your belly button come to your spine. Think about where your ASIS joint is, the bony pony part of your hips. That bony part is shining up towards the ceiling on each side. So your ribs are shining up towards the ceiling. I want you to bring your thumb underneath your rib cage, your baby finger onto your ASIS joint and spread your fingertips out nice and wide. And from here, I want you to take a deep breath in. Inhale. Expand the heart, expand the lungs and the stomach and exhale, release the breath. When you expand the breath, inhale. Feel the fingertips separate. And then feel the fingertips knit together. Feel the hands almost separate away from one another like you're opening a belt. And feel that belt closing up and buckling up. I hope none of you are wearing belts with your leggings. It's just not a good look. Good. And open, lengthen. And exhale, good. Now can you inhale into your pelvic floor, down to where your pubic area is. Inhale to your pubic bone. Feel like you're drawing up internally from the pubic bone up. 
and it's a very subtle move and you'll often see in class people lift their glutes when they're doing the lift their bums keep your tailbone and your bum on the floor and just give that internal lift and they look at the person beside them and their bum's down they're like oh no which one of us is wrong keep your tailbone down for two good i definitely was that person years ago and one more and then draw the belly button towards the spine and try and imagine okay i know it's um such a common cue but like just imagine like i handed you a glass okay and your hand is out and you're taking the glass off me the glass is filled with water and it's not just a regular glass it's like a a cocktail glass you know with a thin thin little leg in it so if you had that cocktail glass in your stomach it'd be very fragile so if you moved your drink would fall out of it so keep it there on your stomach it could be filled with water it could be filled with martini whatever you want just keep it there okay and have it there Keep your knees bent, bring your hands behind your head, interlock your fingertips. From here, lengthen the back of the neck, press your heels down into the chair, and exhale, curl. Inhale deeply, and exhale, curl up. Make sure that you're not using a swivel chair, because I taught in a class with a chair a couple of months ago during lockdown, and uh, somebody was using a swivel chair, and I just saw them in like in slow motion go flying across the screen, um, and it was too late. So make sure your, your, your chair is stable. Now go for four, and we'll layer it for three, two, and one. The next time you come up, can you make sure that it's your back ribs and your front ribs bringing you up and not the neck? Yes, yeah, so if I let go of my arms off my head, my ribs will lift me up for four, three, two more, and one more. Come up, and now see here, see your knees. See your knees are hip distance apart. Curl up a little bit deeper. Imagine like you have a sponge between your knees. And you're just going to squeeze your knees with that sponge. Squeeze into that sponge for 10. Nine. Are your elbows reaching away from me? I hope they are. Like they're hammocking forward. For seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Now squeeze the knees this time from not just your inner thighs, but from your pubic area. So imagine your pubic bone. You're squeezing from there. Squeeze. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze. For eight. Seven. Six, five, four, good, three, two, and one, release, good work. Let go of that martini glass for a moment. Roll your tailbone forward and back. You know your tailbone, you can tilt it um, posteriorly and anteriorly, so get a bit of mobility into that space. Then neutralize your spine, neutralize your tailbone, right? Keep, make sure those knees are hip distance apart. Bring that martini glass, pop it back onto your belly button, go, don't let it move. That can increase your stabilization. Stabilization is amazing. It stops you, um, you know, getting back pain. Exhale, curl up. Now, from here, let's increase mobility. I always talk about mobility in my classes. What I want you to do is bring your left leg forward. Then I want you to bring your left leg under the chair. I want you to bring your left leg forward. And I want you to bring it under the chair. And I want you to do that eight times. Inhaling. Exhaling on the effort as you bring the leg back up. Inhaling. And exhaling. It's a lot harder than what it looks as you go for eight. What I love about that movement is you're opening and closing the hip as well. And we need to increase our mobility around the hip joint to lubricate the joint, to like prevent injury, and just to maintain um, space in our hips. Like if we don't have space in our hips and we don't have a good range of move motion, we're going to get injured a lot more. We're going to be a lot tighter in our bodies. Let's go for four. Let's go for three. Good. Let's go for two. And let's go for one. Bring that leg up and over the chair. Are we doing good? I hope so. Bring that left leg wide and bring it back up. What I'm looking at here is my right knee. Is my right knee still? Am I still holding on to that imaginary cocktail glass? And come up. Right heel down and come up. Let's go for five. There's nothing worse than when you're at a wedding or you're at an event and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to go to the bar. Does anybody want something? And, the, and it's really crowded and then somebody's like, oh, can you get me you know, like a cosmopolitan or something. And you're like, are you serious? Do you actually think I can carry that with everybody else's drinks? And then you have to go to the crowd and just pray that it's not going to fall. As you go for three, I know what's happened to everybody. Let's go for two. Good. Let's go for one and release that left leg down. Are you ready to go to the other side? Hope so. Bring that right leg under. Bring that right leg over. Your tailbone's still heavy. If you feel that your knee is too close to your body or your hip is too close to your body, just push your chair away from you a little bit more as you go for six, five, four, three, two, and on one, lengthen that right leg long. Now mobilize the hip. See what you're doing here. You're kind of mirroring the shape of the head of the femur in the hip socket, that lovely ball and socket joint, by rolling the leg out wide. There's plenty of tension in the leg to keep it nice and solid. 
go as you're moving not just from the foot or the knee but the thigh bone as well as you go watching that left knee all the time for five for four good for three for two good and on one take a moment release good slide those front ribs into the back ribs draw that belly button towards the spine keep that buckling action neck we combine both movements can you lengthen the back of the neck can you lengthen the back of the skull can you bring both your hands behind your head can you interlock your fingertips and can you exhale curl up from here can you lengthen the left leg away can you bring it under can you bring it over can you bring it wide and back can you do that five more times under over wide and around let's go for four good my abs are burning let's go for three good let's go for two yes and let's go for one bring that left leg high lower and lift lower and lift for eight for seven for six good for five four trying to lengthen the leg from the quad four so your hamstrings can stretch three two and one release Take a moment, let your head, neck and shoulders release. Maybe you want to drop the knees to the right hand side. Maybe you want to drop the knees to the left hand side and just give yourself a moment to raise everything that happened on the other side and then just prepare yourself to start on the right hand side. Lengthen, exhale, curl. Take your right leg under and take your right leg over. Come wide and watching that left knee like a hawk. Right leg under, right leg over. Five more times. Good. Four more times. Good. Three good two yes and on one bring the right leg forward point the toe up towards the ceiling press the heel down point the toe up curl up a little bit deeper guys you've got that energy as you go for eight draw all those lower abs in seven in a gentle way six five four three two one and release while you're taking a moment and releasing i'm just going to show you what we're going to do next you're going to bring your heels out of the chair just like they were and what you're going to do is you're going to work these muscles called your hamstrings so your hamstrings are the back of the leg so you have your glute and then your hamstrings so at points you're going to feel like oh my god audrey my my hamstrings are cramping if that's happening too much just take a break release yourself down and um, or just give them a little bit of a rub and then come back onto the chair in a minute later if it's way too hard just bring your feet onto the ground and that's fine as well i love this kind of movement because i generally use, use my glutes a lot but not my hamstrings enough and they get really tight so i want to strengthen them as much as i can so from here let your head neck and shoulders release onto the floor or onto the chair good my knees are here smiling at me their knees are hip distance apart so if you're looking hip distance apart it's like where your toes are together your heels are apart and then bring your toes in line with your heels good press your arms into the floor so we've done this in our previous classes with iconic but today's class you're going to go on a higher level so press your fingertips into the floor spread the five fingers wide feel like you're pressing something into the ground open the collarbone and roll your tailbone just a few times forward and back and when I say roll your tail, I'm not saying roll your back. Your back, your lumbar spine obviously attaches into like, you know, the tailbone sacrum area, but it's not leading. It's a tailbone leading the movement. Yeah. And then your back is slightly going to arch and then it's going to release back onto the floor. And then it's going to arch and it's going to release back onto the floor. And then you're going to find that neutral space. You're going to press your hands into the floor and you're going to see if you can send your tailbone in up towards your pelvis. Yeah, press it up towards the pelvis, press it up towards the pelvis, up towards the pelvis. And then your knees are forward and you're going to engage. You're going to send your knees forward a little bit more. Yeah, and now you're like, oh, Audrey, what's happening? Yes, the back of the legs are happening. That's what's happening, lads. Your knees are coming forward. Your heels are driving into the floor. Your big toe is going to press down into the chair. Try not to let the hips drop. Keep them here. All I want you to do is imagine that imaginary sponges between your knees again. Open your troth and exhale, squeeze and release squeeze the knees together and release when i want to squeeze the knees we're getting together i'm going to layer it i'm not just going to squeeze the knees together i'm squeezing the inner thighs together i'm squeezing the pelvic floor together the pubic area the navel everything's opening everything's closing i often open my arms out and then bring them together arms open wide they come together let's go for eight seven yes six back of the legs switching on i'd say so they're happening right now five but i'll have in a minute of Audrey. four three two and one knees forward press the hands down into the ground throat opens release your shoulder blades down into the mat very slowly 
Release your mid spine, scoop it gently down into the floor. Let your lumbar spine gently lower itself down. Let the tailbone draw itself down slowly and release yourself down. Take a moment, think about what went on there. You are really primarily focusing the hamstrings. Let's engage the glutes now. Your glutes are, are attached to sitting bones. They're called their bones and then there's muscle around the bone. So the glute attaches to the sit bones. They're the bony parts of your bum. I want you to engage those bones, draw them together. There's one on each side, squeeze them gently together. Lift your hips off the mat and make sure they're engaged. That lifts you a little bit higher. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze the knees together for 10. Now both are working hard, nine, eight, seven, six, five, let's go to the dark place on four, three, two, one, drop your hips down two inches and lift, drop the hips down two inches and lift, you're like, oh Audrey, why did I bring that chair out, I know, the hair, the chair of terror, as you go for five, watch those big toes and inner heels, lads, press them down, four, three, two, and one, drop down all the way, let the toes lift, press the toes down, power through, Lift the toes up, drop the hips down, glutes on, hamstrings on, lift. Inner thighs squeeze together as you power through. So combine not just pubic area, not just inner thighs, not just glute, the whole lot together. Press the chair down, don't push it away. As you go for six, your dad, dad don't have a swivel chair now. Five, four, three, two, and on one, take the right, right foot off the chair, the left foot off the chair, and just give those knees a little bit of a rub. Bring your knees into the midline of the body, bring the knees wide, bring the knees forward. Feel the tailbone move with you as you do that. Knees come in, knees go wide, knees go forward. Reverse your direction for five. Good for four. And three and two, and you're like, are we done with the chair, Audrey? No, we're not. Bring your feet back onto the chair, good. Last time, single leg work. As I said at the start of the class, if you don't wanna lift a leg up doing this bridging work, just keep both feet down, it doesn't matter. Press your hands down into the chair, knees have distance apart, feet flat down. Exhale, lift. Now from here, I want you to press that left foot into the ground. Let's strengthen and isolate the left side only. Bring your right leg into tabletop. Can you exhale, roll down through your spine? Take your time, take your time, take your time, take your time. Work through each and every vertebrae as you lower. Power through, lift. Roll down, roll down, roll down, roll down, roll down. Exhale, 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 exhale. Take your time, breathe in. And release. Your tailbone must gently touch the floor. Four more times, worst counting ever. My left hamstring is definitely on. Three. I want to see lots of power when you lift. Two, it's funny, I train a lot of teams, um, especially for fo football teams, like Gaelic teams, and the biggest place I see injuries are hamstrings. So really release yourself down, press the right foot into the floor, left leg and tabletop. It's almost giving that left side a break now as you work through the right side. Take a deep breath in, inhale, exhale, lift, and roll down, and hamstrings where I see injuries the most. Lift, and release. You know, the glute is such a powerhouse and the hamstrings attach into that powerhouse, you know, so they really must work together to support the back line of the body. As you go for three, as you go for two, and as you go for one, and rest, bring it down. See your left knee, bring it wide. Let your left foot be on the outside of the right knee. Again, we've done this before, but on the mat, not with the chair. Press your left knee away from you. Make sure your left heel is pointing away, your toes are coming towards you. And then just gently press the left knee away, bring it back in. Press the left knee away and bring it back in for five, four, three, two, and one. Now draw the right knee in towards you. Yeah, you can take your right foot off the chair now. Go to maybe you want to strengthen that left, right leg long and then bend it. Give your legs a little bit of breather, straighten that hamstring. Press the heel up towards the ceiling for two, and on one, now pull that right thigh towards you. You can let the right foot draw towards the floor, the left knee presses away. Maybe you wanna arch the back, really get into that piriformis on the left hip, or you can send your arch and your lower back into the floor and press the tailbone down and see how that feels on the side of the hip as well. Play around with it. Maybe you wanna do both, maybe you wanna lengthen, and maybe you wanna draw under, or you wanna stay still, and as long as you're going stretching it out, that's the main thing, or a lot of people go from side to side. A lot of yogis love that movement, they're just going side to side and massaging that hip for four. Just so you can walk tomorrow. Three, 
two and one switching sides bring your other leg onto the chair bring your other foot across let your right knee press away from you and just gently press that right knee away and again the same rules apply always have that heel pressing away because you want to protect your knee as you go for four three two one lift the left foot off the chair and from here maybe you want to straighten that left leg maybe you want to bend it maybe you want to straighten it and bend it nicely that lovely stretch of my right glute for two and on one, let the left knee lower, let the left foot lower. Press that right knee away if you add. At the same time, you pull that left thigh towards you. So you're having a lovely push-pull action. You can just stay here happy out, or you can draw your tailbone under and then release to arch. Tailbone under and release to arch as you go for six. Me, myself, I love going side to side. I can feel the ball of the head of the femur just rolling in that socket joint. Oh, it's lovely. As you go for four, as you go for three, as you go for two, and as you go for one, and lengthen both legs under your chair. Let your legs lengthen quite a lot. Let your toes point towards your face. Let your arms stretch behind you nice and long. Good from here, lengthen your arms up towards the ceiling. Bring your chin to your chest. Imagine like you're squeezing an apple underneath your chin. Good, come to here. Let the front ribs press into the back ribs. Come up a little bit higher. Come to here and roll back down. Inhale and exhale. If you want to bring the arms wide, you can circle them forward too. And release down. I want you to go two more times. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw down and slide up. And the next time I want you to inhale, lengthen. Chin to chest, draw your front ribs into the back ribs, drive your calves and drive your thighs into the ground as you come forward. Some people are going to have to grab their thighs to bring them up. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Bring your low tailbone under, draw the lower body into the floor, segmentally moving through your spine. Some people might want to bend the knees and want to grab the thighs as they come up and you can bring your chin to your chest. Option two, curl up, curl up, curl up, curl up, curl up and reach. And do that four more times. Draw the tailbone under. Feel the front body dropping into the back body. Then move through your lower back. Feel a little shaking action. Mid-spine, never rush this exhale. If I was on my own, I would often close my eyes and really connect to my body as I roll up. So you're just moving, moving, moving through the body on the way up. Let's go for three more. Good. When I'm in class, I'm just watching for clients that they're not rushing it or they're not making like a jack-in-the-box action, that they're finding that shape in their spine where they can create space but also find length. Good, two more. Reach and on one more. Draw up. Good, come up to very tall. And that's hard for a lot of us, myself included. Glutes really come out nice and wide. Tailbone presses down. Genie arms, shoulder blades plugged in. Sit up really tall. How tall can you sit up? Can you bring those toes towards your face? And can you twist? Think navel. Ribs to shoulders, gaze. Back to center. Navel, sternum, collarbone, gaze. Really get some nice rotation in there. Let's go for eight. Sit up as tall as you can. Go like there's a wall behind you. Seven. Six. Gosh, it's heating up now, isn't it? Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Let's find our seat car. Toes coming towards your face. Press your front thighs into your back thighs. Draw your tailbones around your back from the tail, not the shoulders. Tail. Tail, tail, tail. This is the hard bit. Good. Stay here. Maybe you want to go a bit lower if you can, do. And twist. Pause, come back to centre, twist. Pause, come back to centre, twist. Pause, come back to centre. I know you're thinking, oh, maybe we're finished all the hard stuff now. No, we're not. We have to do legs yet. As you go for five, four, three, two, and on one, go to your right hand side. Pulse, 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 pulse for eight, seven. Feel that left oblique working. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Come to the left hand side. Twist. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release yourself down completely. Completely an option here. You've option one. Just bring the legs onto the chair and just stretch out and take a break. Or lengthen your arms behind you. Stretch your spine. Exhale. Curl up to flexion like you just did. You can either grab the back of the thighs to lift yourself up. Open your chest and release yourself down. Or you can let the arms be free, let the legs be free, keep the knees bent, open the heart, open the chest, lift. 
and release down. If you want to straighten out the legs, you can. Remember, if you were training yesterday, you were running a lot, you were walking a lot, those legs might not fully straighten, and that's fine too. Let's go for three. This is hard. Exhale up. I like bent knee. Everybody's different. Heart opens. For two. Open the chest. And on one lift, 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 lift. Open your heart, open your chest. Stay here and breathe. Ten, nine. You can rest your feet on the chair. That's no problem. Seven, six. Chest open. Five, four, three, two, one. And release. Bring those knees in, everybody. Circle them around and get the mobility into your hip socket. Close the eyes. Be present with your breath for four, three, two, and I'm reverse your direction. Five, four, circling those knees around. Three, good, two, and on one release. Okay, from here, gently roll onto your side like I did. It doesn't have to be that graceful. Just as wherever you like to roll onto your left or right hand side, bring yourself to stand. Okay, I love using the chair with leg series because it makes it so much harder. I always start on my left leg back, or my left leg forward, my right leg back, just because my left side is my harder side, and I, my body is almost like programmed to start my good side, so I kinda wanna switch up the programming a small bit. So from here, the same rules apply, like we've been doing an all our lunging for all our classes, your left knee is in line with your left ankle. The left knee can be a few inches forward of the ankle, but it can't be a few inches back. That's when you're going into like instability. And I'm all about stability and I'm all about conditioning. So what I want you to do is make sure that when your right foot comes onto the chair, you can hold onto a wall or have a table behind you if you want to have the support. People do that all the time or a bar. Good. And have your right leg on the chair. Your left leg is forward. Good, your right thigh bone is rolling in. Good, draw your hands onto your hips, release the shoulder blades. Take a deep breath in, and your legs are definitely warmed up after that shoulder bridging series. From here, breathe in deeply, inhale. If you want to have the foot flat in the chair, have it flat in the chair, otherwise, inhale. And exhale, lift. Inhale down, pause, exhale, lift. You'll notice that a lot of people in classes will push the chair away. I don't want you doing that. I want you to press down into the chair, to lift up. So you're coming down and you're lifting up. Can you inhale down, exhale, lift. Inhale down, exhale to lift. Can you feel the inner thighs helping you to come up? Can you bring that right knee down a little bit deeper? And can you look at that knee of yours? Is it staying in the same position? See where my one isn't moving? Let's go for five. Let's go for four. Good. Let's go for three. Two, and let's go for one, let's come all the way down. Let's lean back, let's lean into the back wall a little bit. Tiny pulses for eight, you're like, Audrey, my glute, I know. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring the right hand forward, bring the left hand forward, bring the right hand over the left elbow, left hand over the right elbow. Plug those shoulders back for what length? Can you twist, can you keep those legs still and twist? Can you go back to center? Can you twist to the left? Keep those inner thighs on, come back to center. Let's go for eight. I know eight is an awful number. Seven, bring the ribs and shoulders gaze with you. You'll often notice if you've got a tight neck, you'll generally not bring your neck with you. Let the neck and the head that's resting on your neck come with you too. And you'll get so much more space. Exhale with me, everybody, for four, for three, for two, and on one, could you come back to center? Could you lengthen that back leg long? Could you bring your right arm forward and left arm forward? Lengthen your spine, guys. Bring your chin to your chest. Yes. Let's go over 12. Comes on. Yes. Fists good together. Eight. Seven. Six. Fastest counting ever. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Complete option. Stay where you are or lift that right foot off the chair. Point the toe or press the toe. Just don't flaunt it. Chin to chest, open, shoulders back and breathe. A little bit wobbling is normal. Four, three, two, and one, release. Bring your legs together, open up the palms of the hands. Root to rise, open your heart, open your chest, stay here and breathe. Can you feel almost like your elbows? are bringing the weight of the shoulders down your spine. 
and you're finding London space. Be present in this moment. For four. Notice that there are different difference in your breath when you are now and when you started the class. I hope so. For two. And one. Good. All right, other side, everybody. Take your other leg. Good. Tap it behind you. Opposite leg forward. Bring your hands together. Breathe. If you don't like the toes tucked under, flatten them. That's totally fine. Bring your hands onto your hips. Breathe in deeply. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Adjust if you need to. Inhale down. And exhale, lift. Drop the back knee down. It's, it's so much easier to just use the front leg coming forward and back. So much harder to work that glute. The right glute is your stabilizing glute. Your left knee is mobilizing coming up and down. Let's go for six. Let's go for five. Let's take our time. Let's go for four. Let's go for three. Let's go for two. Let's go for one. Stay here and hold. Bring your arms forward. Plug the shoulders back in. Tiny pulses. Eight, seven, six. I can feel that now. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring your right hand over, left hand over. Plug everything in. Twist. Come back to center. Twist. Come back to center. My right knee is in movie. It's completely stable for six. Get a little bit deeper, everybody. Come on, we can do this. The last few minutes. Five. Four. Is that right inside heel on the floor? Three, two, you know what's coming on one? Can you reach those arms behind you? Feel like those thumbs are reaching together. So your heart is open. If you want to stay here, stay here. Otherwise, bring the arms forward for 12, 11, come deeper lads. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Option, either bring the hands onto the hips, or the hands behind you. Can you bend that right knee a little bit more? Find length, find space. Go ahead and breathe. Roll that left thigh bone in for five, four, three, reach for it, two, and on one. Stand tall, palms open, shoulders back, heart open. Breathe. Just give thanks to your body for working for you, for showing up for you, and for bringing you to the mat today. That every time you do this workout in this session, your body will get stronger and stronger and will reward you with results for two and one. I always find when I do a lunge series of that over and over a few times. Like during the week, I notice massive results in mean, my uh, results being results in my mobility and my range of motion. Okay, guys, let's finish with tricep dips. Bring both hands onto the chair. Have a narrow grip. I don't uh, have my legs bent here or long at all here. I have them bent. I have the elbows drawing in. I have my heart open, throat open. My gaze at the tip of my nose. I breathe. Bending at the elbows. Lift. Down. Lift. Tempo. Down. Lift. Let's go for 12. You're like, oh, that wasn't 12, that's 15. Good, 11, 10. Elbows pointing back, nine, eight, seven. Keep that spine long, six. Gaze forward, five, four. It's harder when you go slower with it. Three, two, and on one. Come back to your seat. Take a moment, bring your hands onto your chair. Let's do a little bit of rotation, bend your knees, just a little bit, not too much. Press your right hand down, left hand open. You can add to create a thumb so there's a bit of ten ten tensegrity in my arm. And twist, and open, and twist. Let's go for eight. So that you feel lovely, and long, and mobile. Five, four, three, or it's adjust your stance if you need to. Two. And one. Take the left hand down. Hips are square. Open. And come down. Press that tailbone away. Find length in your spine. Something that we really desire from like the way we sit at our desks. You know, when we're standing around. For four. For three. And two. 
and one come back to center come back to your chair roll your shoulder blades back bring your hands down plug those shoulders in remember if you're finished the session today and you want to carry on doing more dips of course do press your big toes down if you're making a cup of tea later you have a kettle on grab your chair do your dips as you go for 12 as you go for 11 10 power through feeling my belt elbows bending and then the extension is coming into the arm for 10 for 9 8 7 yeah I can feel it, I feel it in the back of my arms 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 and release last thing I promise okay bring your hands onto the chair whether you want to have the high chair or the low part of the chair I want the low part of the chair myself for my spine good bend your knees always bend those knees quite a lot and see the difference if my legs are straight be a lot more round when I bend I find length good and maybe open your heart open your chest and then do a round of cat cows rounding tailbone draws under tailbone lengthens rounding and lengthening for four open the chest inhale rounding exhaling three Inhale to open, find length from the crown of the head all the way to the tail, and vice versa. And on one, tail to crown of the head, bend the knees, spine opens, heart opens, throat opens, your gaze is almost forward, stay here for 10 breaths. Finding the tailbone, finding the length, the length of the back of the legs, lengthening towards your sit bones. Maybe those legs are lengthening a little bit more. Maybe the spine is lengthening a bit more. Maybe your core is on a bit more and your heart is opening. Really breathe into it. Spread out the toes. Spread out the balls of your feet and the heels. For four. Feel so good. Three. Two. And on one, bring your left and right hand down. Grab each opposite elbow with your arms. Tailbone drops under. Unravel, unravel, unravel. Bring up the arms and release. Good and all down through your spine. You know if you're going up and over a hedge and you're in the weight of the balls of your feet. Go up in the knees. And bring yourself onto your mat. From here, sit yourself up nice and tall. And please notice the difference between when you started class and how you are now. How are you sitting? Hopefully you're sitting a lot taller thanks to all that rotation, all that mobility, all that strengthening. Good. Bring your thumbs to the knuckle of your index finger. Create hard open space. For a moment, can you just find your gaze with the tip of your nose? Can you close your eyes? I know the word is used quite a lot, but it doesn't have to be an intention. Find a wish or a goal or a hope. Something deep inside you that you can find in your daily routine or your ritual that will help you find more space while you're at home over the next few months. Maybe it could be doing more of your Pilates practice. Maybe it could be, you know, breathing more and taking some time to meditate. Maybe it's just something simple like getting more fresh air, having your coffee in the morning in silence, whatever it is. Visualize that one small thing that you can do to create space in your body that will serve your mind as well. See yourself doing it, being in it, where you are, space around you take 60 breaths in that moment and you want to bring your hands together in front of your heart center draw your head towards your heart and create some heat and prana around that energy towards that intention for 10 9 8 Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring your arms up towards the ceiling. Seal yourself with your practice. And from me to you, my name is Audrey. I'm so glad you shared this practice with me today. I hope you have a beautiful, healthy, and happy day or night. Namaste, everybody.